Hello students, we were discussing the question answers or I can say the extra question answers of the lesson microorganisms. We have done question number 1 and now we, we will be starting with the question number 2nd. So, question number 2nd is one word answer. Question 2 is one word answer. I will just read the sentences or the questions now. First one, bacterial group that converts nitrides into nitrates. What is the question? They are asking about the group which are responsible or they are asking about the group, the name of the group of the bacteria which are responsible for the conversion of nitrides to the nitrates. I will read the question again. Bacterial group that converts nitrides into nitrates. We have discussed this that which group is responsible? It is nitrobacter group. Now, this group is responsible for this conversion. Come to the second one example of unicellular fungi. We have read fungi, we know that microorganisms can be divided into certain groups like bacteria, fungi, viruses, protozoa and algae and in this they are asking about the unicellular of what the fungi. So, we also know that fungi are also like some of them are unicellular while uh, some of them are multicellular. Here they are asking, uh, they are asking about the name of the unicellular fungi. So we all know and we have discussed this. It is yeast. Now come to the third one: organisms with characteristics of both living and non-living things are. We know that uh, viruses are the one which are neither like the one which do not show the characteristics completely of non-living things and even not of living things. How and why like uh, why we can say this that they are they do not fall in the category of living or even non-living things because uh, what is the reason viruses cannot survive on the non-living things. Viruses need living, living plants or animals to survive. They use uh, the cell of the host to grow to reproduce and if these viruses are out of the uh, cell of the living organism then they behave as non-living thing. That means they cannot grow, they cannot divide, they cannot reproduce, they show all the characteristics of non-living thing. So the group or the microorganisms which comes under this category, the one which shows the characteristics of living things as well as non-living things are viruses. So it is the question is uh, organism with characteristics of both living and non-living things are viruses. Now we will move to the fourth one and the fourth one is parasite responsible for malaria. We know there are certain uh, diseases which get spread by the certain protozoas may be viruses but these protozoa or viruses they remain in the body of other organism and then enter into human beings or the animals. When we talk about malaria, how malaria uh, spread, how and what happens actually. So, the uh, female anopheles mosquito, female anopheles mosquito is the carrier of the protozoa plasmodium. Now, these plasmodium uh, lives in the body of the uh, mosquito and it enters into our body humans or even in the uh, you know like animals through 
uh, mosquitoes and that is the reason they are known as carriers. So here the question is the name the parasite which is responsible for malaria. Now which is uh, the uh, which, which microorganism is uh, responsible for this plasmodium. So I will just write over here plasmodium. Now we'll talk about the fifth one. Milk get get converted into milk powder by the process called. We have discussed this also that there are certain processes through which the food can be preserved. Mainly, if we need to preserve food, what has to be avoided? What has to be kept away? Moisture has to be avoided. It is very very important to keep moisture away. And in the similar way, we discussed many of the methods uh, of food preservation and the way or the process by which milk can be converted into milk powder is vacuum drying. We cannot uh, keep milk for a longer period, especially when we go out, uh, maybe some uh, for some trip, picnic or tour, we cannot carry milk for longer time uh, obviously it is going to be spoiled curdling takes place and if we take milk powder instead of using milk if we take if we use milk powder we can carry milk powder properly we can uh, use milk powder whenever it is required and it is uh, uh, there is no chances of milk powder uh, to be spoiled until unless wet spoon is used. So here they are asking about the name of the process by which the milk uh, can be converted or milk powder can be made from the milk. So uh, this one is number I think yeah fifth. So milk get converted into milk powder by the process called what it is it is vacuum drying. Now we will move to the sixth one. Now what is the sixth question? Algae can produce their own food as they have. We know why the plants can produce their own food because they have got chlorophyll. Most of the microorganisms are uh, included uh, or considered as animals because they do not have chlorophyll in them and the one which has chlorophyll is obviously considered as the plants. So algae as we have studies, uh, studied sorry are the aquatic plants. Now when we talk about the uh, chlorophyll even euglena has got chlorophyll. Euglena uh, also have chlorophyll then why it is not uh, considered as the plants because then it does not show other characteristics of the plants. It uh, uh, like it use chlorophyll whenever sunlight is present but it uh, when sunlight is not pre present then it uh, its mode of nutrition get changed. Even it does not have cell wall, euglena does not have cell wall which is very very important characteristic of the plants. That is the reason euglena is not considered as the plant, it is considered as the uh, animal microorganism. Basically most of the microorganisms are considered as animals only because they do not have chlorophyll, because their mode of nutrition is not autotropic, it is heterotropic and uh, they do not have cell wall. Now that is the reason mostly the microorganisms are considered as animals. Now when we talk about uh, euglena just now I told as it has chlorophyll but it uses when the sunlight is present and even it does not have cell wall. So it is skipped along with the uh, uh, which group amoeba, uh, paramecium, euglena all these comes under the protozoa. Coming back to the question they have asked algae can produce their own food as they have. 
तो वॉट डज दे हैव ऑब्वियसली दे हैव क्लोरोफिल अलगे कैन प्रोड्यूस दे ओन फूड एज दे हैव क्लोरोफिल सेल जस्ट राइट ओवर हियर क्लोरोफिल Now we'll talk about the seventh one, plants like microbes which lack like I'm so sorry, which lack chlorophyll. Now plants like microbes, what they are? They have given two conditions. See if they would have uh, if, if the question uh, was like this, like uh, name the microorganism which do not have chlorophyll, then it was an open-ended question. we have lot of options for that we can write anything for that maybe bacteria you know like lot many things we have to write in the case that if the question is if the question asked uh, is changed in the way that name the microorganism which uh, do not have chlorophyll but now here they have given two conditions plant like microbes they have given two conditions first of all they do not have chlorophyll but still their structure is like of plants so plant like microbes which do not have chlorophyll the one which looks like plants but they do not have chlorophyll is is uh, which one is fungus definitely it is fungus it is fungus we know we have read the structure of uh, hypha and mycelium the whole structure is known as and hyphea and all this details we have studied and we know the structure looks like plant but exactly it is uh, but actually it is not plant as it do not have chlorophyll the cell wall is also absent and the mode of nutrition is uh, not autotrophic so the microbes which uh, which it was it is number 7 plant like microbes which do not have chlorophyll is fungus now come to the 8 one give the name of green brown and blue green algae i'll just write the number over here now i'll repeat the question now uh, give the name of a green brown and blue green algae so we have to write the name of the uh, green algae then brown and blue green algae also so first of all green green if they talk about uh, alga i didn't write algae over here but it is then spirogyra now after this they have they are asking about uh, brown and after this they are asking about blue green algae blue green algae so this one is laminaria and this one is nostoc even if you can write anabena so this one is question number 8 where three things uh, three the name of the three algas are asked first is green yeah definitely they have asked the green one green spirogyra brown laminaria and blue green alga they have asked one one name of the green algae the uh, the brown algae and the blue green algae so green is spirogyra brown is uh, a laminaria and the blue green is nostoc now we will talk about the next one which is the last one it is ninth the study of fungi is called as they are asking the study of fungi is known as so it is known as mycology the study of the study of fungi is called as mycology so these were the uh, answer in one word uh, this was question number second we are solving extra question of the lesson microorganism ncrt we have discussed and now this was the second question which we have discussed 
the uh, now we will talk about the next question third one so please note this now we will talk about the next question that is question number third and what is the question number third it is write the difference between now they are asking question number third or whatever like if you are writing in roman then it is write the difference and write differences now the first one the first difference they are asking about algae and fungi so it is algae versus fungi here we are talking about now about the difference between the alga and fungi now we know very well we have discussed the saying that algae are what these are aquatic plants plants i am saying plants that means they have chlorophyll see uh, sometimes it becomes uh, uh, very easy to relate so this one is totally uh, is totally one point is related to the another one now when i am saying these are aquatic plants that means plants means they have got chlorophyll when they have got chlorophyll that means they can prepare their own food that means they are autotrophs and when i am saying that they are plants that means the wall has to be there so we'll talk about this now we'll write algae and fungi both will be discussing in the way of the differences so algae and fungi now the first one algae is these are aquatic plants so these are aquatic plants whereas fungi uh, grow where fungi is are what these uh, grow on the uh, dark uh, dumb dead and i should say dead and shady place like the uh, place where the dead uh, or decay uh, uh, things are there so for this moisture is required but it is not so that they will be growing only uh, uh, you know in in the water they can't grow totally water if the, uh, if the if we talk about the area where which is totally covered with water no so they will grow where on the dead plants dead animals where they decay the you know the unwanted seaweed or something like that the thing which is uh, of which has got moisture and is kept there like that only which is which has got nutritions also so uh, when we talk about algae we can write that these are aquatic plants but these are uh, when we talk about fungi these are not aquatic plants they are terrestrial they are terrestrial and grow on dead and decay matter now when we talk about the second point the second point in alga which is very very clear from the first point that these are plants and so the algae has got chlorophyll have chlorophyll and in this column what do i need to write they obviously do not have chlorophyll so second point is chlorophyll is absent chlorophyll is absent when chlorophyll is present definitely they are going to prepare the own food definitely they will be preparing their own food so and 
as they are preparing their own food so they are autotrophs they are autotrophs but the fungi are not autotrophs and they cannot prepare their own food as they do not have chlorophyll and when they do not have chlorophyll they cannot prepare their own food that means they are not autotrophs so what are the uh, what uh, fungi are known as what is the meaning of or what can be what uh, we can say in one word that the organism which cannot prepare their own food are heterotrophs so they are heterotrophs now here two characteristics of the plants can be seen very very easily now we are moving to the next characteristic feature of the plants that the cell wall is made up of cellulose cell wall is made up of cell wall is made up of cellulose and here the cell wall obviously it is it won't be of cellulose rather the cell wall is made up of chitin cell wall is made up of chitin now we'll talk about the fifth point now what is the next point again it is also related that in plants the food material when it gets stored it will be always stored in the form of the starch but in animals when we talk about the food the stored food will be stored in the form of the glycogen isn't it so here the food is stored in the form of the starch food is stored in the form in the form of starch and here the food or the food food is stored in the form of glycogen these are the differences between the algae and fungi what are the differences algae is uh, algae is a what these are aquatic plants but these are what these they are terrestrial and grow on dead and decay matter now they have chlorophyll and this one they do not have chlorophyll as they have chlorophyll they can they make their own food and are autotrophs and here fungi cannot make their own food and so they are not autotrophs and the one which cannot make their own food are heterotrophs cell wall obviously when we talk about the plants the cell wall has to be of cellulose so here the cell wall is made up of cellulose and here the cell wall is made up of chitin now the food gets stored in the form of the starch and here the food gets stored in the form of the glycogen these are the differences between the algae and fungi we are talking about question number 3 which is write the differences between the a is alga and fungi now we will talk about the difference number b so the difference uh, which we are supposed to write between now 
is bacteria and virus so i will write over here bacteria and virus so definitely i will be writing over here heading bacteria and viruses as soon as, as soon as the name or the term viruses comes the first thing which comes is these are the one which uh, doesn't falls in the category of living or non living thing because they use the cell of the host plant or animal and when it comes about the comparison of uh, like when we are comparing viruses with bacteria viruses are uh, very minute structures these are even minute or smaller than bacteria now we will be discussing about the difference between the bacteria and viruses so when we talk about bacteria and viruses the first thing which comes in the mind is that viruses are the one which are very minute creatures these are even smaller than the bacteria and bacteria have their own cell the bacteria are the one which can live on the living things also that means in the living organisms body also in and on the body also and at the same time the bacteria can uh, survive on non living things also but the viruses are the one which cannot survive on any non living structure for viruses to survive it is very very essential for them to be in the living organisms body this is the the biggest difference and that is the reason that we say that viruses are the one which shows the features of living things as well as non living things so uh, now we are going to write about these um, differences between the bacteria and the viruses so viruses are very small this is point number 1 i have forgot to write point number 1 viruses are 10 to 100 times smaller than bacteria that means these are very minute creatures are bigger than virus i won't be able to write over here so these are bigger than viruses bacteria can grow on living as well as non living thing so bacteria can grow or i will just write can grow on living as well as non living things we all know bacteria can survive inside the body outside the body that means on the body of the living organism inside the body of living organism at the same time there are certain viruses which can live on the dead thing also they do not require any other organisms body to survive whereas the viruses can grow only in presence of living organism or 
if even if you do not want to write presence so can it grow only in living organism or if you do not want to write the word presence it's okay so can grow only in only in of both it has written so can grow only i'll just rub this line can grow only in the body of living organism living organism that means it, the viruses need certain extra cells living cells i need to say it's not certain extra cells that means viruses need the uh, other living organism to survive because viruses do not use they do not have any structure any structure means they cannot reproduce they cannot grow they cannot divide by their own for all these uh, things they need to utilize other other organisms or their host cell and what they do they convert the dna of the host cell in such a way that that dna starts producing the the their which structure they start producing virus so now the third one can reproduce by their own ways maybe asexual or sexual so can reproduce by their own can reproduce by their own but what viruses they do what they do they utilize or they change change the dna or rna of the organism of the host to produce virus now i think this point is very clear that bacteria whether they will uh, reproduce by any method maybe sexually maybe asexually but they have their own cell they will divide by their own but here what they do they change the uh, genetic material in such a way they change the genetic material of the host in such a way that it starts producing the viruses now these are intercellular these are inter intercellular whereas viruses are intracellular now what is the meaning of this inter intercellular means these cells leaves between okay these cells leave between the cells of the host okay these cells leave that means the bacteria is leave between the between the two cells of the host whereas viruses are intracellular that means these leave inside the cell they live inside the cell it is very very essential for the viruses to be inside the cell of the host uh, and that is the only way for them to keep themselves alive now next one there are many bacteria which are useful also we know many bacteria are harmful they give uh, many harmful diseases like diphtheria dysentery uh, maybe cholera uh, conjunctivitis yes uh, and there are so many many bacteria which are helpful for us like many bacteria which are present in the intestine we talk about many bacteria which are used in the food industry 
talk about many bacteria which are responsible as the uh, in the field of the medicines in the for the agriculture also so there are many bacteria which are very useful many bacteria are useful many bacteria are useful but here all are harmful only all are harmful all are harmful while teaching this also i explained that all the viruses are uh, harmful but still i would like to bring this point in your notice and that time by, by, like while teaching also i discuss this uh, that there are now certain viruses which are used uh, to treat um, the tumor the brain tumor so nowadays like certain viruses are used in different uh, field maybe in the genetic engineering also they are used but i can write uh, over here mainly then mainly the viruses are very very harmful now there are many differences which we can discuss uh but now we don't have place over here so you can write over here the diseases caused by the bacteria and the diseases caused by the viruses like here you can write just now i said many diseases caused by bacteria diphtheria like diphtheria cholera tetanus now all these diseases are caused by bacteria but when we talk about viruses there are certain uh diseases which are caused by bacteria so here you can write the names of those diseases maybe uh, uh, common cold bb uh, um, swine flu or aids polio all these diseases can be written in that column so these all are the main differences between the bacteria and viruses hope now this uh, is very very clear to you all and now we will move to the next difference we will be talking about uh, two more differences so please note this